Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to cover a very disturbing story I just caught wind of last night. Um, I was, I don't know how I came across this. I think that uh, I was actually doing, I was doing some research on a different thing related to the FBI. As you guys know, I am working on a documentary about the FBI's misconduct in the uh, Michigan Whitmer uh, plot hoax. So I was doing like some research on the FBI and this is like a really recent article that came out that apparently this man, James Gordon Meek, was an ABC News journalist that the FBI raided his house and he has disappeared. He hasn't been seen or heard from since and it appears that his colleagues aren't really interested in talking about it. And so I find that disturbing. Um, you guys know that kind of covering FBI misconduct and calling them out is sort of my thing. So um, I really wanted to cover this story and it's just scary, right? That's the kind of thing that happens uh, that you, that happened in the Soviet Union, right? Th this is like the secret police, right? The Cheka, the NKVD, uh, raiding your house in the dead of night and disappearing you. And uh, you either get lined up against the wall or you get sent out to a gulag in Siberia You're doing 10 years of hard labor. Um, it's really strange. So I wanted to just cover the article and um, what we know so far. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. But before I begin, just do me a favor. If you can, please like the video, um, comment, subscribe if you haven't yet. I cover all kinds of different topics here. And um, if you leave a comment, please do for four words or more to help us with the algorithm. Uh, YouTube is basically at this point demonetizing all my videos. And then I have to file appeals and then days go by and then they'll say, oh, OK, now it can be monetized. But by that point, everyone's already watched the video. So they do these little things um, to try to mess with you. So anyways, um, yeah, I need all the help I can get there burying my channel. If y'all can share the video, I really, really appreciate it. All right, so let's get into the Rolling Stone article that just came out yesterday. FBI raids star ABC News producer's home. Emmy-winning uh, producer James Gordon Meek had his home raided by the FBI. His colleagues say they have not seen him since. So, you, like, the first thing I want to say is that, like, you'd think that if you were some big mainstream media journalist, producer, documentarian, Emmy winning, that you'd have a level of protection from this kind of thing. If you thought that, you would be wrong. At a minute before 5 a.m., so they always do these pre-dawn raids, militarized, heavily armed with an insane number of people. Y'all, Y'all know, okay, you see how, what they did to Roger Stone and others, and that's not to say that I even like Roger Stone. I think he's kind of a, a freak and a deviant, but that's not the point. The point is, is that we are losing our rights in this country, and we're seeing our law enforcement um, being utilized as political operators, Um to carry out political hit jobs. At a minute before 5 a.m. on April 27th, ABC News' James Gordon Meek fired off a tweet with a single word, FACTS, in all caps. The network's national security investigative reporter was responding to former CIA agent Mark Polymero Paulus's take on the Ukrainian military with assistance from the U.S. was thriving against Russian forces. We'll just call him Mark. Mark's tweet filled with acronyms indecipherable to the layperson like TTPs, UW and EW was itself a reply to a missive from Washington Post Pentagon reporter at this point. I just call them stenographers. Dan Lamuth, who noted the wealth of information the U.S. military had gathered about Russian ops by ob observing their combat strategy in real time. The interchange illustrated the interplay between the national security community and those who cover it. And no one straddled both worlds quite like Meek, an Emmy-winning deep-dive journalist who was also a former senior counter-terror advisor and investigator for the House Homeland Security Committee. To his detractors within ABC, Mix was something of a military fanboy, quote unquote. 
but his track record of exclusives was undeniable, breaking the news of foiled terror plots in New York City and the Army's cover-up of a fratricidal death of PFC Dave Sherritt II in Iraq, a bombshell that earned Meek a face-to-face meeting with President Obama. With nine years at ABC under his belt, a buzzy Hulu documentary poised for Emmy attention and an upcoming book on the military's chaotic withdrawal from Afghanistan. Ding, ding, ding. The 52-year-old bear of a man seemed to be at the height of his powers and the pinnacle of his profession as a journalist. Outside is Arlington, Virginia apartment. And guys, I live not that far from Arlington. I'm in Fairfax County here. So this is like a 20 minute drive for me. It's so freaking unreal. Uh, Outside his Arlington, Virginia apartment, a surreal scene was unfolding and his storied career was about to come crashing down. Mark's tweet marked the last time he posted on any social media platform. That was probably the last time anyone's actually heard from him. And this is what's crazy about this to me. How is this not a huge, massive story? How is ABC themselves not making it national headlines? They could if they cared, if they wanted to, but they don't actually speak truth to power. So people like you and me will have to do that for them. Uh, The first thing Meek's neighbor, John Antonelli, noticed that morning was the black utility vehicle with blacked out windows blocking traffic in both directions on Columbia Pike. It was just before dawn on that brisk April day and self-described police vehicle historian Antonelli was about to grab a coffee at a Starbucks before embarking on his daily three mile walk. He inched closer to get a better vantage when he saw an olive green Lanco Bearcat G2 armored tactical vehicle often employed by the FBI, among other law enforcement agencies. A few Arlington County cruisers surrounded the jaw-dropping scene, but all of the other vehicles were unmarked, including the Bearcat. Antonelli counted at least 10 heavily armed personnel in the group. None bore anything identifying which agency was conducting the raid. After just 10 minutes, the operation inside the Siena Park apartment complex, a six-story upscale building for D.C. professionals with rents fetching two to three thousand dollars a month was over. Quote, they didn't stick around. They took off pretty quickly. <clears throat> Gee, I wonder why. And headed west on Columbia Pike toward Fairfax County. Oh, my God. Antonelli reads, uh, guy uh, recalls, guys, if I ever disappear, <laughs> if I ever go missing, y'all know what happened. I was black bagged. I was renditioned. I'm being held at some like weird CIA black site and bad things are happening. Quote, Most people seeing that green vehicle would think it's some kind of tank, but I knew it was the Lenko Bearcat. That vehicle is designed to be jumped out of so they can do a raid in that kind of time. It can return fire if they're being fired upon. So this is something like that you would have if you were going to like a den of um, terrorists or something like that. It's not something that you would think that you'd need to approach an Emmy-winning journalist at their house, right? That in itself is just stunning. Multiple sources familiar with the matter say Meek was the target of an FBI raid at the Siena Park apartments where he'd been living on the top floor for more than a decade. An FBI representative told Rolling Stone its agents were present on the morning of April 27, quote, at the 2300 block of Columbia Pike, Arlington, Virginia, conducting court authorized law enforcement activity. The FBI cannot comment further due to an ongoing investigation. Investigation. That is insane. Just because, and this is the other thing with these courts and judges, they are totally weaponized and they are signing off on these things. And the FBI somehow claims that makes what they're doing legitimate. It does not. It means the entire system is corrupted from the inside out. But they'll use that to say, oh, this was this was court sanctioned, court authorized doesn't matter. It's immoral and it's wrong. Meek had been charged with no crime, has been charged with no crime. Here's another thing. Since the Patriot Act, 
we no longer have civil rights as American citizens. Get that through your head. Doesn't matter if you committed a crime or not. If you upset the wrong people, yeah, they can black bag you, I guess, and disappear you and erase your history. Even if you're an Emmy winning mainstream media journalist and producer. Independent observers believe the raid is among the first and quite possibly the first to be carried out on a journalist by the Biden regime. A federal magistrate judge in the Virginia Eastern District Court signed off on the search warrant the day before the raid. If the raid was for Meek's records, U.S. Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monacow would have had to give her blessing. And let's talk about Merrick Garland as well. A new policy enacted last year prohibits federal prosecutors from seizing journalist documents. Any exception requires the deputy AG's approval. Gabe Rotman at the Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press says, to my knowledge, there hasn't been a case since January 2021. And what they're talking about was Project Veritas, I believe. In the raid's aftermath, Meek, who frequently collaborated with ABC World News Tonight anchor David Murray, has made himself scarce. None of his Siena Park neighbors, with whom Rolling Stone have Uh, spoke have seen him since with his apartment appearing to be vacant sienna park management declined to confirm that their longtime tenant was gone citing quote unquote privacy policies similarly several abc news colleagues who are accustomed to unraveling mysteries and cracking investigative stories tell rolling stone that they have no idea what happened to meek oh and you're not interested you're not concerned at all And let's get real, okay? ABC News is not much for investigative journalism anymore. It's a lot of stenography for the national security establishment. Quote, he fell off the face of the earth, unquote, says one. And, quote, people asked, but no one knew the answer. Wow. An ABC representative tells Rolling Stone he resigned very abruptly and hasn't worked for us for months. What did he find out? What did he learn? Sources familiar with the matter say federal agents allegedly found classified information on Meek's laptop during their raid. Well, here's the here's the thing, guys. All right. They made the same claim when they raided the home of the former president of the United States of America. It was the same justification to do something that was overtly wrong and politically motivated. Um, do do they they kind of tried to give the same reason for going after Project Veritas? and because they covered the story of the diary and um it's just absolutely insane and i'd like to see the proof we also know that these people are able to plant things on people's computers so yeah i need to see more evidence excuse me you know sorry but i'm cynical and jaded at this point One investigative journalist who worked with Meek says it would be highly unusual for a reporter or producer to keep any classified information on a computer. Exactly. Quote, Mr. Meek is unaware of what allegations anonymous sources are making about his profession of uh, possession of classified documents. His lawyer, uh, Eugene Gorokov, said in a statement, quote, if such documents exist as claimed, this would be within the scope of his long career as an investigative journalist covering government wrongdoing. The allegations in your inquiry are troubling for a different reason. They appear to come from a source inside the government. Also, oh, maybe someone he was investigating that wanted to retaliate. It is highly inappropriate and illegal for individuals in the government to leak information about an ongoing investigation. We hope the DOJ promptly investigates the source of this leak, and you know they won't. It is unclear what story, if any, would have put Meeks in the FBI's crosshairs. Meek worked on extremely sensitive topics from high profile terrorists to Americans held abroad to the exploits of Eric Prince, the founder of the infamous military contractor Blackwater. In recent years, some of Meek's highest profile reporting delved into a 2017 ambush by ISIS in Niger that left four American Green Berets dead. Meek and ABC then adapted the story into a feature length documentary, 3212 Unredacted, which debuted last year on Veterans Day on ABC's sister company, Hulu. 
A robust uh, Emmy campaign began prior to Meek's disappearance with events like a screening and a Q&A at the Motion Picture Association in D.C. that the journalist attended with one of his daughters. The story was particularly incendiary because it undermined the Pentagon's official narrative of what happened on the ground in the African nation, and it presented evidence of a cover-up at the highest levels of the army, according to the film's logline. Adding intrigue, sources say another ABC News investigative journalist, Brian Epstein, uh, no relation to Jeffrey, also abruptly and inexplicably left the network a few months before Meek. Epstein also worked as a director, producer, and cinematographer on uh, 3212 Unredacted. Hulu stopped Emmy campaigning after Meek apparently went AWOL, and the documentary ultimately failed to receive a nomination. Epstein told Rolling Stone, quote, I'm not commenting on this story, unquote, before abruptly hanging up. Even stranger, in the months before he vanished, Meek was finishing up work on a book for Simon & Schuster titled Operation Pineapple Express, the incredible story of a group of Americans who undertook one last mission and honored a promise in Afghanistan, which he co-authored with Lieutenant Colonel Scott Mann, a retired Green Beret. Meek even featured a picture of the soon-to-publish book on his bio on social media and frequently tweeted about his involvement. But post-April 27th, the book jacket photo disappeared from his bio, and Simon & Schuster has scrubbed his name from all press materials. The first sentence of the jacket previously read, quote, In April, ABC News correspondent James Gordon Meek got an urgent call from a special forces operator serving overseas, unquote. Now it says... Quote, in April, an urgent call was placed from special forces operator serving overseas, unquote. What I want to point out here is this is exactly what happened in the Soviet Union. Stalin used to literally erase people from photographs. They're erasing his history. They're literally scrubbing it after they've renditioned him. This is insane. Early press materials available on the Wayback Machine gushed about Meek's credentials. Quote, he has covered the rise of al-Qaeda since 1998 from the Millennium Plot to reporting from the ground outside the Pentagon after a hijacked plane hit it on September 11, 2001 to combat embeds with U.S. and Afghan special forces in Afghanistan. James has looked terrorists in the eye, including 9-11 mastermind, according to the government, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed at Guantanamo, shoe bomber Richard Reed, and Dirty Bomber Jose Padilla inside the Supermax Federal Prison and Zacharias um, Musawi at his trial. Simon & Schuster did not respond to a request for comment. Mann, who is solely promoting the book, which published in August and became a New York Times bestseller, says he is unsure of what exactly happened to Meek. Well, I mean, is it really... Are we really unsure? The FBI rolled up to his house with 10 armored vehicles and then he disappeared and now his history is being erased. Quote, He contacted me in the spring and was really distraught, and he told me that he had some serious personal issues going on and needed to withdraw from the project, unquote, man tells Rolling Stone. As a guy who is a combat veteran who has seen that kind of strain, I don't know what it was. I honored it, and he went his way, and I continued on the project. Man says he hasn't heard from Meek since. Both the Obama and Trump admins were criticized for targeting journalists and their sources. Obama's Justice Department brought charges under the Espionage Act against a record number of people, from top generals like David Petraeus and James Cartwright to document leakers like Chelsea Manning. Yeah, and Edward Snowden. Chelsea Manning. Okay, we're going to go with that, I guess. Yahoo News reported last year in 2017 under Trump as many as 20 U.S.-based journalists, including Pulitzer Prize-winning Associated Press reporter, were being tracked by a special Customs and Border Protection Unit. Well, let's talk about Julian Assange, guys. Come on. Mike Pompeo wanted to literally assassinate him, but the Biden admin uh, set out to reverse that trend. Yeah, right. Biden called the practice of obtaining journalists' phone records and emails wrong. That, that Yeah, people lie, guys, especially politicians. And in July 2021, Attorney General Merrick Garland enacted a new policy that bars federal prosecutors from seizing journalists' records and leak investigations, with some exceptions, including if reporters are suspected of working for agents of a foreign power 
or terrorist organizations, as well as situations involving imminent risks such as kidnapping or crimes against children. Yeah, because I'm sure journalists are involved in that kind of thing all the time. A Department of Justice press release at the time added, quote, to further protect members of the news media in a manner that will be enduring. Garland asked the deputy attorney general to undertake a review process to further explain, develop and codify the policy announced today in department regulations. Unquote. Given the new policy, the question looms on what grounds the feds would have had room to act on Meek. Well, guys, they don't care about the law. Let's be real. OK, No one is more mystified by the strange saga than the people who lived in and around the Siena Park complex. The raid became the talk of the building and the neighborhood businesses, but details remain elusive. Quote, obviously, I was trying to figure it out because, oh my God, what was happening on my floor, says Kristen Poitra, who lived in an apartment adjacent to Meeks for more than a decade, but has since moved out. Quote, he was often with his two daughters and he was always really nice. I know he lived in the building for a significant amount of time because I remember when those daughters were really young. My dog accidentally picked up something in the hallway and it was a Barbie boot and I knew it's got to be theirs because they were the only kids on the floor. I went over and one of the girls answered and I was like, does this belong to you guys? They're like, yeah. And they just kind of shut the door. Despite seeing Meek in the elevator and parking garage frequently, neighbors didn't really know much about him. He kept to himself, often hanging out on the rooftop alone. The only thing that really stood out was his hulking frame. He was hard to miss at six feet seven. I couldn't even tell you what his occupation was, Poitra adds. Another resident who works in law enforcement says the muscle behind the raid was highly unusual. Quote, the last time I heard about a SWAT team going into an apartment building was the crazy stuff in the Navy Yard, and they had weapons and stuff, the resident says, of an operation three days after the Siena Park raid in which two men were apprehended inside a luxury Navy Yard apartment building and charged with impersonating federal law enforcement. Unlike the Meeks case, the Navy Yard raid was well reported, and authorities said they seized a stockpile of weapons. An employee at the Sitco station across from Meek's building, who declined to give his name, witnessed the raid. Quote, I remember coming to work that morning, seeing a lot of police cars out there. Nobody said anything. I didn't know what was going on. At ABC News, Meek's sudden absence has left many of his colleagues perplexed, given that he still had time remaining on his contract. But his background was often shrouded in mystery. Some contemporaries were under the impression that he previously served in the military. One described a picture in his office that was taken in a desert in which all of the others posing with Meek had their faces blacked out. One co-worker described him as sometimes gruff but otherwise collaborative. Ben Sherwood, president of ABC News at the time, once lauded his accomplishments in a staff memo noting Meek's, quote, vast knowledge of national security issues and skills as a deep diving reporter. Unquote. Now, Meeks appears to be on the wrong side of the national security apparatus, and no one can say for certain if law enforcement officers actually removed him from the building, and thus a riddle was born. Documents pertaining to the case remain totally sealed. Quote, I just want to know what happened, unquote, says another person who worked on 3212 unredacted. Meeks' situation is making me nervous. I'm just going to deadbolt my door. Well, I can tell you that that's not going to help you at all. And just to give you guys some background on Meek, uh, this is from ABC News' website. James Gordon Meek is an award-winning investigative journalist and former senior counterterror advisor and investigator for the House Committee on Homeland Security. Um, He has covered the rise of al-Qaeda since 1998 from the millennial plot to reporting from the ground outside the Pentagon after 9-11, blah, 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 blah. So you can see... Um, His stories here, 424 bylines for him. His most recent story that he did was back in April, April 14th, 2022. And again, it's covering terrorism. Okay, Uh, we've got one about 3212 unredacted from December of 2021. 
Uh, and so these are just some of his stories here. By the way, guys, I will include the links to everything in the video description. We're going to move on now to a video that he did, an interview. We're not going to play the whole thing, obviously, but this was an interview he did about 3212 Unredacted. Afternoon, Master Sergeant. They were in dress blues, and I knew. I just said, no, no, no. Okay, so this is the A-Team. It goes into this story, right? 3212 Unredacted, an ambush in Africa, the Pentagon's betrayal. And so you can see him here. There he is. Speaking hey, How are you? to the interviewer. Great. Thanks for joining me this morning. I like your background. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, do I say 3212 or what? How do I say this? I think uh, three, two, one, two is, is that good? Uh, what we say. I think that it, it depends on who you ask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a reference to the Green Beret team, operational detachment, three, two, one, two. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you for joining me today. So about your, your eye-opening documentary, um, ODA, crazy three, two, one, stuff, two, Green guys. Beret, special forces killed in Niger. How did you first hear the story where the army wasn't being completely truthful about the incident? Well, I covered it with other colleagues at ABC News when it occurred. On October 4th, 2017, it was actually went public two days later because one of the soldiers with David Johnson was reported missing in action. But it was about six months later, uh, the parents of Jeremiah Johnson contacted me. OK, so he's talking about how he came uh, it, to get involved in the story on 3212. And said that they had some suspicions because they were comparing notes with another family and so th this is what ended up happening and, and it was a they they basically uncovered a cover-up that led to the top leadership of the military so he was making some pretty powerful enemies okay and things did not add up and they i soon heard from the other family member uh, and he was an afghan war veteran and he said you know what i what i'm being told is not what happened i don't believe and he welcomed us to you know, investigating it and said that the family would cooperate. The other family that had first contacted me, that stepfather was a retired FBI agent. Wow. So it, it wasn't just that from the onset of reporting on this, when it happened, we had, you know, it was clear things were kind of hinky, you know, even with fog of war considerations. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to leave it there, guys. The question is, and it remains, what happened to James Gordon Meek? Has he been renditioned and disappeared by the FBI? And it seems like they're now going through and erasing his history, removing his name from projects he worked on and acting as if nothing has happened. I think it's incredibly concerning and I'd like to hear your thoughts. Um, what do you guys think happened? Do you think that the FBI was involved in this? Um, do you think that he disappeared after they raided his home and just fled the area? And why would he do that? Um, what do you think about all of the court records related? to this being sealed i always enjoy hearing your thoughts you guys always come up with things that i never thought of or sometimes you guys find little pieces of information that i didn't find so if you guys have uh, any any if you hear anything about this if you find anything that you think might be related to it reach out to me let me know um, and i'll update the story of course as we learn more anyways have a good day guys Whee!